of me wants to say, who? Where? Try that again. Part of me wants to say good morning, but then I'm realizing, uh, yeah, well, you know what? Maybe it is morning by the time folks get the watches. But anyway, shut up, right? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. If you're watching it before bed, good night. Unless you're a night owl and you're going to bed in the morning, good morning. Well, I'm waiting for that one thing to start up. Uh, had an idea, but uh, that was kind of sidetracked. So I'm going to go with uh, uh, the joys of, of epilepsy. mascot for the Flyers. I didn't get asked to vote on it. Uh, they need to euthanize this fucking thing. It, it's disgusting looking. And it's stupid. And he can't skate! He brought his big goofy ass out last night and he fell on his butt twice, at least. Well, you know. Um, yeah. Kid had a great outing. Um, didn't come home until late because uh, Farsi had a game all the way out in Ewing, so of course JV had to go as well. Um, but, you know, and talking with him, his day went great, he had no problems. Um, you know, rode down with a few of the guys on the team, on the bus. Um, <laughs> one kid, you know, he spilled his cereal on the, uh, on the bus, and they were, you know, trying to get it cleaned up, well, the kid wanted it cleaned up before, uh, the coach saw it, so he was an upperclassman, and he was looking at my son going, Joe, clean it up, Joe, clean it up, she was like, no, I didn't spill it, I'm not cleaning it up, Joe, Joe, so the kid starts to, to clean some of it up, so Joe goes, you know what, okay, he starts scooping some of it up in the cup, and whatever, and he goes, Hey guys, so and so, I forget what he said his name was. So and so sharing a cereal. Anybody want some? Like, a couple of the guys are like, yeah, yeah, okay. And Joe passes it out. And he goes, ah, you guys are eating floor cereal. <laughs> but it was nice because it was a couple of these guys that gave him shit already. I mean, not big time, but enough to say, eh, yeah, you kind of had that coming. And it's good to see that. You know, he's not hesitant to you know, rip back at people. Uh, on the way back from the game, apparently, uh, one of the upperclassmen, Gio, who I, I, I really appreciate uh, as a player, as a teammate, as an upperclassman, he, uh, during their summer leagues, he and Joe had a hell of a collision. And Gio's a, he's a solid guy. He's probably a little taller than I am. Probably about 180 pounds, if not a little more. Solid kid, and uh, and Joe's pretty much almost a string bean now. About my height, about 150 pounds. Uh, they slammed into each other, and Joe went down hard, but got right back up. And the kid Gio was like, checking on him, checking on him, even after practice when my wife went to pick him up. He runs over the van, goes, "Hi, Mr. Pollard. Hey, you know, I hit Joe. Joe and I, you know, had a pretty good uh, collision." Just, I want to let you know, and you know, the next day he saw Joe. He goes, Joe, you all right? You good? Good kid. Good freaking kid. And I really appreciate that, you know. And it's one of the things that uh, our teams are missing is the camaraderie between players, especially between varsity and junior varsity. But uh, you know, he had a great time, great day. He didn't seem to have any problems. His homework was done and taken care of. set up in his room, taking, you know, keeping an eye on him, and, you know, it, it's becoming a nightly thing now, where it seems that every night, uh, or close to every night, he's having a seizure, and they are 
been steadily uh, more uh, more intense than before. Um, the last handful have all been pretty substantial. Uh, last night it was only seconds from the time it started uh, to the time I got to his bedroom, and he was almost out of his bunk. You know, he was rolled right to the edge where I had to run in the room, pull a fucking O.J. Simpson leap over the laundry basket that was in the wrong spot, and I would almost dive to keep him from falling off the bed, and I grabbed his arms, you know, he was almost beating his face in, so, now he got up this morning, he seemed like his normal morning self, you know, slightly, you know, subdued. I mean, imagine his head is probably hurting pretty bad. Um, you know, it was about a two, maybe three minute seizure. Uh, after he left for school, I look at his plate, and for my kid to only eat one out of two slices of pizza, I know he's not feeling it. I mean, we love pizza. I could draw a line at some point with it. This boy, there is no line. So, to see that he didn't eat that other slice, I knew he wasn't, uh, wasn't feeling too up to it. Excuse me. But, God bless him, man. Not one point, not one time did he ask, hint, or even try to convince anybody to uh, let him stay home. I mean, it was even a couple years ago, um, we were getting, uh, well, my wife was getting a few calls from uh, a couple of the teachers, she was concerned about him, he, you know, he doesn't look so great, and you know, I asked him, he said he's got a real bad headache, but I asked him if he wanted to go to the nurse, he said no, he's okay, finally, we had the nurse come in to him and talk to him, and uh, said, you know, well, man, we can call your mom, and he says, no, that. I'm good, it's just a headache, you know, I'm, I'm good, uh, we get home, and yeah, we're talking to him, my wife asked him, well, how come you didn't ask to, you know, stay home, or something, he goes, I can't stay home all the time, like, you know, who's going to watch me, who's going to be here with me, if I stay home, then you or dad's going to have to stay with me, she's, that's what mom and dad do, that's, you know, no problem, yeah, but, I'm all right. So it's good to hear that he's got uh, some of his pop-ups resiliency in him and some common sense. Yeah, it's all right, Pennsylvania. Just ignore all the signs that say merge, lane ends. Ridiculous. So, you know, that's where we're at today. Um, thankfully, it's Tuesday. All he had, and it's Tuesday. All he has today is uh, just an hour and a half practice after school, if they even get that in with this rain. How long, how long oh, it's a purple car carrier. Never saw that before. But, yeah, man. It, uh, it stinks. It's... sure it's limited his social life. Uh, he's slowly but surely starting to step out of these things. Uh, you know, we, with Big Sister out of the house now, we you know, had to bite the bullet and uh, get him a cell phone because there's going to be times when he's going to have to walk from the high school uh, to the middle school, well, elementary school, and pick up his little sister, walk home with her. Uh, there's times he's going to be at practice by himself. Now, the nice thing with this high school practice is his coach, his twin brother, uh, has epilepsy. So he um, always grew up knowing what to watch for, what to do if there was a situation, um, all the signs. So um, that was a big help for us, especially for my wife during the summer. Um, as busy as it was, she could drop him off at camp or practice wherever you know, Coach Pat was and not 
really have to worry about um, you know, watching over him. Ever since he started having these seizures, we've been at every one of his practices. You know, most likely I'd be at his practices anyway. But, you know, one of us, we're always at his practice. Uh, we never miss a game. I mean, there may have been one game where we both missed because uh, we were both pretty sick. And, um, he scored in the game. Too. That was a couple years ago. Um, and I know it, it's put a damper on, on things for him. And it sucked to hear him to hear him say, you know, well, I guess I can't do such and such because of my seizures, huh? And it really stung not long ago. And he said, I guess I can't join the Army because of my seizures. Of all the things he knew he wanted to do in life, that was one of them. And he's got about a year and a half, not even a year and a half. You know, if these things continue past the age of 16, then most likely, no, he's not going to be able to join. Hell, the fact that he's already had so many might disqualify him. Uh, shit. But at the same time, I worry about his comprehension. You know, you could teach him anything, but he's not going to be learning at the same level, the same way, the same pace as the rest of the recruits. And I don't want him being the pile of the group. You know, physically, he could do all that shit. Um, he's a hell of a marksman, and I've been helping him with that. And you know, it's all the little things. And I, I saw it firsthand. You know, we had a guy in my platoon, and I, I kind of figured it out. But the one day when he came out and said it, because he was getting us all smoked, we had to keep, you know, we come up to our barracks and everything's tossed, the racks are flipped, you know, lockers are trashed because people were leaving them unlocked or you know, something wasn't up the code, and well, I had to pay for it. This one kid, this one kid in particular, um, was the one behind a lot of it. Um, and he said one day, he's from Mississippi, he goes, well, it's not my fault I have a learning disability. And the place got silent. And I just kind of, you know, hung my head where he couldn't see me. And I'm thinking, you know, this is ridiculous. These recruiters will take anybody they can get their hands on. You know, to me, to me, there was no way you couldn't have told that uh, this kid uh, didn't have something going against him. You know, what a pain in the ass that was. So now I'm like, you know, I don't want my son to be that one. I don't want anybody's son to be that one. You know, because that's enough to take your mind off of what you're really there for. It's enough to make you lose your mind. It's enough to make you, you know, start questioning, hmm, well, I do have it. I love that. And no left-hand sign, and you go and make a left-hand turn. You know, your person finally snaps, and when they're out there on the, uh, you know, take a BRN, out on the gun range. What's to stop them? You know, aim center mass. You ain't got to worry about the Kevlar. So, but he also said uh, not long ago, he goes, I can still be a mechanic, right? He said, hell, hell yeah. I told him, you know, learn how to turn that wrench, get a job with a state garage, you know, where you're working on the police cars because they're always maintained. Uh, you always have work coming in. You know, you get a job at the state garage. You can work on their uh, trash trucks. And, well, not necessarily trash, but, but you know the brush removal trucks and heavy pickup trucks and all that stuff. You know, doors aren't shut to you. They aren't shut. It just hurts when you see doors closing that you haven't even had the opportunity to, to turn
turn the knob on. And as a parent, to see that hurts even more. That's why we have to raise our children to be better than we are and to be resilient and to keep on, keep on, keeping on, keep pushing, keep going. Don't stop until you have reached the absolute top or wherever you're getting to. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. I told them, I know what things look like now with your epilepsy, but until somebody officially stamps this thing on your life or whatever and says, no, you cannot do this, then you don't quit. You don't knock that off your list. You keep working towards that because it's not final yet. Keep hope, keep inspiration alive, and keep faith. That's about it for now. It's now 2 a.m. Wednesday morning. I've been up for an hour now. So much for going to bed early. I'm so sick of this body. It's problems. Sick of my head. And it's problems. I'm sick of my son's problems. I'm sick of not sleeping. Or what I want. I'm tired of it. Sick and tired.